let's get started. I'm super excited to talk about some of the topics that we're going to cover today because these have related to me on a completely personal level. So a lot of the things that I'm sharing with you today are things that I have struggled with, have gone through the process of learning, and I'm really excited to share some of these tools and techniques with you today so that you'll have a better understanding of how to protect your energy and what it looks like to protect your energy and what it looks like to have bad, uh, negative, nasty energy kind of seeping into your energetic field. So how many of you can actually relate to some of these statements? I feel like I can never get enough rest. I'm always exhausted. Ding, ding, ding. That was one that I completely resonated with. My body hurts all the time and I don't really know why. Oh gosh, me too. Ugh, that person is so draining to be around. I'm going to try to avoid them a little bit more. We've all probably said that about someone at some point, right? I really want to go to the gym, eat healthier, go on a trip, but I just don't have enough time or energy. So you guys, my background for the past 15 to say 16 or 17 years, I've been working in a very stressful, high paced healthcare environment. I was working with grieving families um, on the platform of kind of organ and tissue donation. So I would go in and speak with these families and I would also work with the hospital staff who was taking care of the patients, particularly in the emergency departments and in the intensive care units. So I was around a lot of very difficult situations, a lot of sorrow, a lot of sadness and my day-to-day -day environment was almost all of those things that I just said. I was completely exhausted and drained. By the time I got home at the end of the day, I could barely drag myself up my stairs, get my clothes off and climb into bed. All I wanted to do was turn on Netflix or Amazon Prime or something and completely disconnect and drown out anything that had to do with emotions or uh, any energy that I had to put forth to anything. I was completely exhausted. My body was in so much pain. By the end of the day, my lower back was screaming at me and I would try to go to sleep and I just couldn't get enough rest and I was just in so much physical pain and as well as emotional pain because of the things that I was seeing on a daily basis. It was just taking an absolute toll on me and I was struggling from day to day. I would try to get enough sleep at night and enough was not enough. I mean, you're talking five, six, maybe six hours. And then I was waking back up and I was right back at it the next day. And there was about a two or three month time frame where I was in so much physical pain that it took me at least 30 minutes just to get out of bed. I was hurting so badly and I didn't know what the heck it was. Um, I had to sit in bed and stretch and just getting up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, I would just hold it because I was hurting so bad. I just didn't want to endure the pain to have to get up and go to the bathroom because my, my lower back was just screaming at me. So these were some of the things that I was experiencing, which led me down this healing journey of learning more about my energetic system and how it can play a role in my healing process. For many, many years, I was really strongly focused on the physical symptoms. I was really heavily into detoxing and eating healthy, eating a plant-based diet, and then um, realizing that, hey, maybe I needed a little meat into that diet. I was kind of really trying to find uh, balance within my physical body so that I could feel better, have more energy. And at the time I worked for a hospital that was really into health and wellness. So they were giving us a lot of these programs um, free of charge for the employees that were teaching us how to heal ourselves and how to utilize uh, foods and um, you know the environment around us to provide ourselves with a healthy 
kind of energetic field. But at the time, I was so incredibly busy, I didn't even have time to go to some of these programs. And that was really sad. As I look back now, I don't work with that organization anymore. But I look back and think of all the wonderful things that they provided for us that I just really didn't have the opportunity to tap into. So um, I wanted to kind of just briefly share that story with you because that's where I'm coming from when it comes to uh, healing and uh, I've really been down that road. I would kind of consider myself a natural healing guinea pig of my own where I started to really dabble in a lot of different modalities because I was so desperate and I was just trying to find a way to heal my own pain. And that's when I started to stumble on some of the energy medicine and energy psychology techniques that I will be discussing in this series. So let's talk a little bit about energy and why is it so important? So energy is the ability or the capacity to do work, okay? So that is the physical definition. When we eat, our bodies transform the food into energy to do work, okay? So when we run or we walk, we burn energy in our bodies. And when we interact with others, we pick up on their energy too. And we also exude energy from our own energetic system. So that is a key point that we will be discussing later is how our energy can bleed off onto others and their energy can, um, we can kind of soak it up like a sponge. So energy is everything, okay? So everything around us is considered energy. So what happens when our energy isn't balanced? I mean, you guys could probably rattle off a few things right now that you personally have experienced when you know that your energy is out of balance, right? A big one, fatigue, fatigue. Um, stress, okay? Stress is a huge factor in uh, our own physical and emotional pain that we suffer with on a regular basis. Um, depression, right? Uh, that was one of the things I dealt with. I was so extremely exhausted that I began to feel depressed because I wasn't living the life that I wanted to live. I wasn't able to follow um, my dreams and my passions because I was so darn exhausted. I just couldn't find the energy or the time for that matter to do the things that I loved doing. Um, you can be triggered by things, right? Anger, frustration. You can start to have the physical symptoms of uh, tension in your back and your shoulders, maybe migraines, uh, headaches. Those are the types of things that you can really um, struggle with when your energy is out of balance. Chronic pain throughout the entire body. That was one thing that I was struggling with. I'd go from doctor to doctor to doctor, and they just tell me it was fibromyalgia. I'm like, well, what is fibromyalgia? So I started re researching fibromyalgia, and I was like, gosh, I just... I couldn't accept that, you know, as an answer. So I started, that's when I really started to dive in. And that's when I found out about energy medicine and what energy is. And that's um, kind of where my healing journey began. Back in um, 2011, I started to go through my own little personal spiritual awakening. And that's when I started to do a lot more of those heavy detoxes and um, really getting into the plant-based medicines and the holistic healing. And then around 2016 is when I started to uh, dive into the energy healing. So as we you know, go through this series, um, I'm going to share with you some of my experiences, and I hope that they're helpful to you because I didn't really have anyone to go to. I didn't know who to go to because I was hurting and I was struggling and I was tired and, and I was stressed and I didn't know who to talk to about it. And it seemed like my coworkers were just as stressed as I was. So I felt like I was burdening them by going to them and having these conversations about my own personal health experience. And it became really taxing on me. Um, so what are some things that drain us of our energy? For me particularly, it was overstressing. Um, I come from a family that has a uh, strong, <laughs> what is the word, strong background in obsessive compulsive disorder. So I was kind of taught at a young age that worrying was normal. And so I, being around um, some of the people within my family, <laughs> Uh, they were all worry warts. And so I kind of learned that behavior of being a worry wart. And I took that with me into my adult life. 
And so I would have excessive worry about everything, everything. And I was worrying about uh, things that didn't even matter, but I was just worrying to worry. And that completely depletes your energy. Um, overthinking and overanalyzing, that's another one that will completely burn you at both both ends of the candle, right? So when you're constantly overanalyzing, you're putting a lot of energy into something that uh, you should just sit back and go with the flow and allow those answers to naturally come to you. But um, we get stuck in that subconscious mind where we have that autopilot program running and running and running and it makes it really difficult for us to shut it off. So for me, struggling with obsessive compulsive disorder, obsessive worrying led to obsessive uh, overthinking, which then led to comfort eating. So for me, comfort eating was kind of my way out. You know, I would just sit back and watch my Netflix and, you know, grab my whatever it was, whatever it was, chocolate, cake, sweets. For me, it was particularly sweets um, that I was really picking up, overeating, comfort eating was a really tough one for me because um, when you're stressed out, your cortisol levels are shooting up and that is making you want more and craving more and more carbs and more sweets and that's just fueling the beast, you know, inside of you. So um, that was definitely draining my energy. Um, fueling drama and negativity. So I was working in a healthcare environment where there was a lot of high emotions, high stress, a lot of sadness, sorrow, a uh, lot of drama, a lot of negativity. People weren't really processing their emotions properly, so they were kind of taking it out on each other. There was a lot of anger and frustration and stress. And in the beginning, I was really getting caught up in that. I was either getting caught up in, you know, drama on the unit with the staff or drama with my staff behind the scenes or drama with a family. So I was really kind of trying to find um, a healthy balance there and it was just getting really difficult to do that. So when you're caught up in that, that drama and negativity, it lowers your vibration, which we'll talk about in, in some uh, later series about what that means and how to raise your vibration. But it really lowers your vibration, which then lowers your immune system, and it's completely draining you of your energy. It's like a hamster in a wheel. You're just spinning and spinning and spinning and going nowhere. Um, complaining all the time, okay? So if you're constantly complaining, woes me, the, the, you know, nothing ever works out for me, you are draining your vital life force energy. You're basically taking that uh, fuel that the universe is giving to you and to your body and you are just completely depleting it and just throwing it in the trash. Um, so we will talk about, um, probably in the next episode, about how our thoughts affect our reality, how our emotions affect our health, and how to raise our vibration. Um, that puts us in that victim consciousness uh, where we don't want to be, that holds us back from moving forward in our lives and being the best version of ourselves. So we'll talk a little bit about that in future episodes. Taking things personally. Oh my gosh, people pleasers out there. Yep, that's me all day long. I uh, am a people pleaser. I just wanted to make everybody happy around me. I wanted, you know, peace in the world and everybody to have a have a smile on their face. And if they didn't have a smile on their face, it was my fault. I had to take that responsibility and I'm trying to make them happy and try to make them, um, you know, feel more comfortable. And that was completely draining uh, every ounce of energy that I even had if I had any left. So taking things personally, holding on to the past. If you are stuck and you're not moving forward in your life and you're completely holding on to the past and you keep revisiting things, maybe someone did you wrong or maybe you went through a terrible divorce or maybe someone betrayed you and you keep bringing it up and talking about it and bringing more energy to it, um, then all you're doing is draining yourself, right? So energy flows where attention goes. So what you give your attention to is where your energy is going. So if you're giving your attention to the past, what are you giving to yourself now, right? So you want to focus your energy and your attention in the now moment. Let go of the past. That's just a chains holding you down. Let yourself be free and let that go. 
We're going to do a little bit of EFT tapping in some of the future sessions. So I'm hoping to be able to tackle some of those issues that we may be holding on to that could be holding us back from being the best versions of ourselves. We don't want to be living in resistance. So when you're living in resistance, you're creating a block in universal flow that's coming to you, okay? So we want to continually live in a natural flow state, a natural creative flow state. And when you're living in a state of resistance, then it's causing a lot of energy drainage, right? So uh, it's like, um, you know, I, I always see the visual of someone trying to pull a donkey, right? And they're trying to pull the donkey and the donkey's just, du it's dug his heels in. He's like, I'm not moving. And so Someone just keeps pulling the donkey, but then they let go of, you know, of the, the, the reins and then they hold the carrot there and the donkey just kind of walks on over and eats the carrot, right? So the thing is, is you're trying to force something when you just need to have the natural flow and everything will just happen with ease. Um, living just the opposite of living in the past is living in the future. What does living in the future do? It creates anxiety. It cr completely creates anxiety because you don't know what the heck is happening in the future, but you're worrying about it right now. And it's completely draining you of your life force energy. I was a complete, <laughs> complete victim of this, um, OCD leads to anxiety and my anxiety was off the Richter scale. So until I started to learn some of these techniques um, is when I really started to heal and have more uh, conscious thoughts about what it is that is affecting my life force energy. Okay. And I'm sure you guys can think of some other ones. Those are just some of the ones that I was affected by that I think most of us can really resonate with. So let's talk a little bit about empathy and what empathy means. So to you, is, is empathy energy restoring or energy draining? Okay, so working with grieving families, I had to have a lot of empathy, but I also had to have a lot of boundaries when it came to working with them. Um, so there is a difference between sympathy and empathy. So empathy is physically experiencing the feelings of another where sympathy is understanding the suffering of another, okay? So when you empathize with someone, you've had similar personal experiences. But when you sympathize with someone, you're acknowledging their circumstances, but maybe you haven't experienced those similar circumstances. So empathy is associated with emotion, and sympathy is associated with recognition, so when you empathize with someone, you say, I feel your pain. But when you sympathize with someone, you say, I'm sorry that you are in pain, okay? So when you're empathizing with someone, there's a connection there, all right? There's a, there's a deep connection. Where when you're sympathizing with someone, there's a separation. So empathy is when you're feeling the same emotions as the other person and being there with them in the pit, and sympathy is you're feeling sorrow or concern for the other person while keeping a distance. So a good visual I like to um, kind of give to people is when I say the pit, physically picture someone down in a pit, down in a pit, and there's a ladder going from the bottom of the pit up to the top of the pit. Okay, so when you sympathize with someone, you're up here on the top of the pit looking down at that person and you see that that person is struggling, they may be in pain, they're hurting. And when you sympathize with them, you're looking down into the pit and saying, hi, I'm sorry that you're going through what you're going through. I can't imagine what you're going through. Is there something that I can get for you? A sandwich, a drink? How can I help you? I'm always here from you. I'm always here for you if you need someone to talk to, okay? That's sympathy. Now, empathy is you're at the top of the pit and you see that that person's in pain. You feel that pain. You get on the ladder. You climb down that ladder and you stand face to face right there with that person in the pit. You don't even need to say anything. It's a matter of just being in their presence they can feel your energy and they know that you are there for them, that you feel what they feel and you have a deep understanding, a deep connection, a deep emotion to knowing what they're going through, okay? 
So how does empathy impact our energy? All right. So as humans, we are wired to feel emotions. All right. We can feel our own, also those of others. So modern neuroscience has actually proven that our brains have specific circuits that enable us to feel with others, all right? So seeing someone in pain can cause us to feel pain. Some may call it emotional intelligence and others may just call it being highly sensitive. But emotions are feelings and they are a part of our survival. E slash emotions are energy in motion, okay? So some of us can go through what we call empathy burnout or compassion fatigue or vicarious trauma. There's a lot of different names for it, but we can go through these particular feelings, these energy draining circumstances that can really hinder us in our emotional body, our energetic body, and our physical body, and even our spiritual body as well. So what are some signs of empathy burnout? Uh, anxiety, right? Critical thinking, poor listening, impatience, lack of empathy. You're just, you're done. Your cup is so full and it's overflowing. You want nothing to do with anyone who is dealing with emotions. Like, for me particularly, I was at work all day dealing with grieving families and then I'd come home and a family member or a friend would call me to tell me about their emotional day and I just couldn't deal with it. I couldn't handle it. It was too much for me. So I just shut down, completely shut down. I would uh, do what's called the hermit stage and I would just be in my home and shutting off my phone, putting on airplane mode and I wanted nothing to do with the outer world because I was so uh, drained from the inside and I had so much burnout that it was just... Um, it was beyond exhaustion. So you can have emotional outbursts, all right? You could have a meltdown. You could uh, lash out at others. Uh, bullying. Bullying was something that really uh, ran pretty high in the field that I was in. And it wasn't necessarily that people were bullying to bully. It was because they were so uh, burnt out that they just couldn't handle it anymore. And they didn't know how to express their uh, burnout and their emotions. So they were just lashing out and taking it out on each other. And then, um, you know, everybody was taking it personally and then it just became a big, uh, big nightmare, you know? So um, it can also lead to physical symptoms like insomnia, uh, pain, tension, those types of things. So the expectation that we can be immersed in pain and suffering on a daily basis and not be touched by it is as unrealistic as expecting to be able to walk on water and not get wet, right guys? So it's important to understand uh, when you're going through burnout and to take the appropriate measures to get yourself out of that, to provide the proper self-care, which we will talk about in um, some future episodes, how to do that. So do any of these sound familiar to you? When you're in public, do you constantly feel overwhelmed with emotion and you don't understand why? Uh, do you feel other people's physical ailments after you've spent time with them? I do. Do you feel compelled to care for anyone in pain, even if you don't know who they are? Yeah. Do people often come up to you and share their life story, even if you don't want them to? That happens to me all the time. Strangers. <laughs> do you carry the weight or the burdens of others after you've had interactions with them? Yes, for sure. I was throwing that backpack right on my back every single time I worked with those grieving families. Do you feel anxious in crowds and have mood swings regularly? Yes. Okay. So if you have any of these, any of these things that I just stated, then you may be what's called an empath. Okay. So an empath, E-M-P-A-T-H. So what is an empath? An empath is someone whose cognitive empathy mode is on complete overdrive. It's someone who has the ability to pick up the thoughts, emotions, and energies of others and carry them as their own, okay? So I didn't even really know this concept of an empath. I had no clue what it was until... Back in 2017, I attended an energy healing conference in Salt Lake City, and this blew my mind. This woman got up there and started talking about 
and being an empath and sharing her story. And I was like in tears. I was sobbing my eyes out. I was relating to her so much and the situations that she was going through. She talked about how she suffered with fibromyalgia and back pain. And um, she would uh, come home and cry all the time. She'd be sitting in front of the television and uh, some random you know, commercial would come on. She'd just start sobbing her eyes out. That is exactly some of the things that I was struggling with. I didn't even really understand what that meant. And so once I understood the concept of what an empath was and I started to apply it to my everyday life, whoa, my life began to change. So that's why I want to share this with you because if you've made it this far in the video and you're saying, uh-huh, uh-huh, you're on the other end going, yes, Tanya, yes, that's me, I can relate, then you're probably an empath and you probably need to learn how to protect yourself. So how do we regain our power back, right? So for me, setting clear boundaries and following them, it's okay to say no and not give a reason why. People pleasers out there, it's okay to say no and not give a reason why and to not feel guilty about it. I think that's the biggest thing is you feel guilty about saying no. Who cares? It's your own personal time. Set those clear boundaries and follow them. Don't engage in negativity, gossip, or drama and stay away from energy vampires, okay? Energy vampires are those people who like, they see that you have a shining light. It's like, a, you know, like a, a moth to, to a light, right? So our auras, you know, are this beautiful energetic field around us. And when we're constantly being drained, it's like Swiss cheese, all right? It's got all these holes in it. And these energy vampires just crawl into those little holes and they just bury themselves in there and kind of latch on. So try to stay away from those types of people the best way that you can. Ask yourself, are these emotions mine or are they someone else's? And if they aren't yours, then kindly just let them go. I do this through the act of muscle testing, and I am going to do an episode on muscle testing to talk a little bit more about that because it's really a cool technique and it has completely transformed my life. So um, do you seek to find balance in your life and do what feels good to you? Um, that was something that was hard for me. I was always people pleasing and I was always doing things for others and I wasn't really doing the things that I wanted to do. But I learned a really cool technique that when something comes up and it's not my issue, it's someone else's and they come in and bring this really strong energy, just say to myself, this is not my emergency. This is not my emergency. Let it go. Move on. That's their emergency. It's not yours. And you can move on from that and feel so much better and so much stronger. And you're holding yourself in your own power. Some of the things, the techniques that I like to use were journaling, meditation, yoga, centered prayer. They can all help you feel more centered. Um, try making the first five minutes of your day to setting the tone for your day. Start some sort of a ritual, whether that be journaling, meditating, yoga. Just do five to 15 minutes a day. It will really transform your day and it can set that tone of that really strong energy that is what you want to walk into your day with, okay? Um, eating healthy and drinking lots of clean, fresh water and getting plenty of rest getting out in nature. I cannot emphasize any more about getting out into nature. Nature resets your complete energetic system. The earth puts off a natural Schumann resonance that our bodies just crave. And when you spend time out in nature and you actually take it to a whole new level of grounding and earthing, putting your bare feet on that ground, you are resetting your complete energetic system. So I cannot emphasize that more. So what is the importance of shielding our energy? So let's talk a little bit more about some of the more esoteric ways that you can protect your energy. So all of these techniques were kind of new to me. I didn't really dabble in this area, but I'm telling you, some of these are very effective and I think they're worth sharing. So uh, crystal protection and orgones, all right? So crystals, yes, crystals are so protective. Some of the ones that I love to use, I will actually wear them bracelets, necklaces, earrings, pop them in my purse, have them in my car, wherever I can put them, I will put them. Shungite, black tourmaline, rose quartz, hematite, selenite, fantastic crystals to protect your energy if you're an empath. Even if you're not an empath, perfect. Great crystals to use. 
orgones. Orgones are the pyramids that incorporate uh, different crystals and metals in a resin. Uh, if you haven't uh, heard of an orgone, look it up, Google it. They're fantastic for not only protecting your energy from other people's energy, but also from EMFs and uh, some of those electromagnetic frequencies that can uh, hinder our energetic field. A clear out script and positive intentions. Working in the hospital, I was constantly leaving the hospital feeling exhausted. Well, once I learned how to completely clear out my energetic field and leave what I picked up in the hospital behind me, I started to feel better, okay? So one of the very easy clear out scripts that I use is I clear out all negative emotions, feelings, energies that I may have picked up throughout my day, willingly or unwillingly. I completely heal and zip up my aura raise my personal vibration to the most optimal level, and I call my power back into my body 100%, okay? Simple as that. Setting a positive intention and raising your vibration. Essential oils. I know a lot of you out there are probably using the essential oils and there's so many different ways that you can use them. I'm actually gonna do an episode on essential oils and Bach flower and how you can raise your vibration with them. Frankincense, myrrh, sage, clary sage, cinnamon, Fantastic ones to cleanse your energetic body and to bring you back into balance. An energy routine. If you haven't heard of Donna Eden, she is a fantastic woman who talks a lot about setting an energy routine for your day. She does crossovers. It's how it's important to cross over your energy so that way you can clear any stagnant energy in your body. So I would definitely suggest uh, Googling her. She's got some videos on YouTube. Grounding and earthing, I talked briefly about that. Uh, you can either go physically out into the, the earth and put your feet down on the grass, or you can actually buy mats. And I actually sell some of those uh, uh, products on my webpage at www.thesoulcafe.org. One of the simplest things you can do is to take a shower and visualize all that negative energy, all that junk from your day. Visualize it going down the drain, okay? So you guys, ships don't sink because the water around them. They sink because the water that gets into them, right? So don't let what's happening around you get inside and weigh you down, all right? You are such a beautiful energetic being that you are supposed to shine. You are supposed to feel light and you are supposed to be light. So don't let the energy of others bring you down and, and, and anchor you in a way that you don't feel comfortable. So if you're feeling completely bombarded by other people's energy, then that can hinder your healing process. I hope that some of these tips that I shared with you today are helpful. I hope that you can try to practice some of them maybe this week and make them a part of your daily routine. Your soul will absolutely love you for it. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.